Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the World Live every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive and program stream at windowsontheworld.net. Welcome to Windows on the World. On this show, we're going to be talking about the reality of demons. We have on the homepage an article which contains all of our shows with Jerry Marzinski and our other guests, and it's called Demons Are Real. And you can access every single show through that article on the homepage at windowsontheworld.net. Most of the listeners to Windows on the World will be familiar with Jerry Marzinski, retired psychiatric practitioner and revolutionary in the respect of looking into what spiritual possession actually is. So, Jerry, we met recently in Romania for the first time, and we've been talking to each other since 2014. And over those years, we've produced many, many shows. So for those who don't know about you, give us a brief potted history. Well, I've been working with psychiatric patients for uh, close to 40 years and studying the voices that schizophrenics hear. And it turns out that they are not hallucinations as the psychiatric mafia says they are. Uh, they run very, very well-defined patterns. Uh, and one of the things they do is they, they extract energy from their victims. Mm -hmm. So if they're running patterns, they can't be hallucinations like psychiatry insists they are. That's, yes, that's it and in your nutshell. work in this, we have covered over many years. So go back into the archive for that. You can find a lot of stuff on Jerry's website, jerrymarzinski.com, and also Engineering Mental Sanity on YouTube. So we're going to have a special guest today, Janet, who is working and was working in the field of psychiatry. We talked briefly, briefly about this just before we started, but Janet, can you introduce yourself and what you were doing and what you are doing now? Absolutely. Um, I'm Janet Swain. I'm a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Um, started my uh, medical career as a RN in, in a trauma center. So my background in initially was in trauma, physical. Um, it took a real hunger with the mental health community because as Jerry can testify, because we work in the ER a lot in mental health also, um, at least 50% of what we're seeing in the ER is mental health. And that's probably a conservative number. Um, took a real um, heart for mental health patients uh, they're not well received in the ER, so they're not they're not often getting the love and care they really need. And, uh, and I'm not speaking out. about yeah, I'm not speaking about the 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 side Jerry's on. I'm talking about the medical side does not want mental health cluttering the ER. But that's interestingly, that's really Janet, the police in the UK have now stopped dealing with mental health incidents. Well, we're going to get there. a big problem. <laughs> yes. Carry on, Janet. Thank you. So um, I um, naively still um, not, uh, this is still not too long after 9-11. So I'm just waking up to the, the demon side, the dark side, because I was very naive, um, Pollyanna at best. I wanted to help and serve. Um, I went on to uh, get my doc, uh, ba uh, master's degree in mental health. And a big majority of that degree program is memorizing medications, hundreds and hundreds of medications. Learning theory of if you have this symptom, you take this. And the whole um, mental health theory behind it is we're dealing with uh, neurotransmitters, we're dealing with serotonins and norepinephrines and dopamines. And this is what we're telling our patients, you know, if you're having um, manic features or, or emotional dysregulation or hearing voices, we're targeting dopamine. And I've heard Jerry say this many times, and I can't stress this enough. We can't test this. So we're yes. going off of symptoms. The chemical if imbalance, you, which is the yes. kind of hold all term. That's what we're talking right. about, isn't it? Yeah. And totally here's, made here's, up by J.C. Lilly. The so drug companies the, made it up. The irony, and, it, and you, you learn all about this. through You don't learn it in school. But the irony is um, 
you have more serotonin in your gut than you do in your head. <laughs> and yet we're targeting serotonin in, in, in the brain. Um, and, and as Jerry probably will go on, on a tangent too, the mind isn't even what we've been taught it, it is. And clearly when you learn what the mind is, everything starts to make sense. It all just starts to make sense. I don't want to get off track. Um, once I graduated, I would say my first year to two years, I was in community mental health. And I'm sorry, I, I'm in Texas and we have horrible, horrible pollen and I have allergies because I just went on a huge country retreat. So bear with me. Um, the uh, community mental health was awesome because we may not have seen great progress in, in, in improving their mental health, but we were helping them. We we're getting them housing. We were getting them resources. We were making a difference. I didn't see improvement and I never, I don't ever want to use that word. I rarely saw any kind of baseline I would want for my own family at all on medications. I just didn't. Um, and it broke my heart to see the outcomes we had to use for children it is not acceptable. It's just not. I went into private practice, which was atrocious. Uh, the goal is to see a patient every 15 minutes, and that includes prescribing, reviewing meds, uh, making sure meds aren't interacting, talking to the patient. All that has to be done in 15 minutes, and you're seeing another, and you're seeing another, and you're seeing another. And we're not, we don't even have time to hear them. We're not hearing Dish, them. Dishing out medications. Right. And, 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 um, oh, I just don't want, I could go on, Mark. I moved on. No, to that's a really prison. good introduction, Janet. And that's I, very, very yeah, clear. Yeah. And that and, painted yeah. a very vivid picture of what's going on in mental health. And that's so what I saw. I think that is yeah. a very good way of starting. And you, when you mentioned 9 11, that was a big wake up call for a lot of people because the start yeah. of a whole new world system. Yes. And the audacity of that event was a traumatizing event. And yes. when you talk about the amount of mental health patients in the ER. That is something I didn't quite know about. So you're saying that up to 50% of people who I'm attend. I'm saying that's conservative. Really? Because you have to I, also consider, I'm sorry, you go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I saw the same thing. I mean, they didn't want those mental health patients in there. They didn't know what to do with them. They just wanted us to get them out. They didn't care how mm -hmm. we got them out. They just wanted them out because they didn't know what to do with them. So, yeah, and I'd say easy, 50% were mental health patients. To play off of that, um, here in the county I'm in, in, in Texas, um, they would get them out and they would end up in, in the jail. And I worked in the county jail also. So our largest population of mental health here in the county I'm in, which is the richest county in America, and one of the largest populated counties puts their mental health in, in the jail. And I so saw the prison the full of mental health patients. That's where they, they are. They, they, they I, had just... all, yeah, I had an Alzheimer's patient in lockup for a DUI. It's, it's unbelievable what you'll see in there and it's heartbreaking. I don't think it's much better in the UK and the UK is going to a private system also. Mm -hmm. In fact, the private system's already in. They just masquerade it under this banner of the National Health Service, which is basically a bunch of private companies now. And I did a show on that a while ago. So Thank you for that, bringing that up. Yes, it, it's very important. And this kind of locking up of people with mental health issues is very prevalent and it's not taken account of by the police or the courts unless it's fully diagnosed. It's and I've had experience. I've had experience yep. of that. But it is, uh, yes, let's carry on because this is getting very interesting now. So when can did I you play start? off that? Yes, of because course, it's very important. That yes. was my frying pan to the face wake up of how how toxic and dysfunctional the mental health system was is when I when I got to the jail because it was already bad enough the crock of what how we weren't helping people and how uh, 
a lot of people are making a lot of money. When I got to the jail, again, still a little bit naive and very excited to work with that population, very high acuity. These are some of the sickest of the sickest of our mental health. And it's rewarding to work with it if, if that's you know where you're driven. These contracts that these private companies get in these jails are astronomical. Billions They're the worst dollars. of the worst, too. They could care less about the patient. So they, they... I, 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 I don't want to say anything I can't prove. But the, the, it, there's a term in the military, the appearance of impropriety. There yes. is an appearance of impropriety that there is a lot of bonuses and kickbacks going on for not spending money. Because I was reprimanded if I saw too many inmates. I was reprimanded if um, they were starting in, again, I'm not a fan of medications, but as Jerry will say, some people you have to stabilize somehow. Yes. You can't work with them yet. Yes. And so certain medications will cost more than others. And the whole game is money. It's all right. money. And no one's listening. And nobody's getting better either. Not even close. And no one. No. And people are getting hardened. They think it doesn't work. So they just get on this game, game, the, the wagon of there's money. We, we're, we're cranking out so many mid-level practitioners because the jail will pay me six figures to do nothing, to do nothing, to show up, see Push a few out, people, man. don't spend too much money, and go home, and don't rock the boat. Yeah, that's the big one. Yeah. Absolutely. And there has been evidence of that in the UK and the culture of cover-ups quite recently. And people in the UK will know what I'm talking about. But mm -hmm. that's a great opener. When did you start thinking that there was something going on other than random hallucinations or psychosis? I was smiling because I can I can tell you exactly when. So I recommend anybody who's a believer. I'm a, I'm a I'm a spiritual girl. I'm a believer. Um, go see the movie Nefarious because I had not one but two nefarious moments. Um, one was in private practice. Um, I had a very charismatic man in my office, very charming. Um, prodding with me, like the voice as well, prodding with me, laughing like the voices do, Jerry. And he said, I know who you are. And I said, you do? Who am I? And he goes, I know who you talk to. And I said, you do? Who do I talk to? And he goes, I know. And I said, well, do I talk to the same type of people you do? And he laughs maybe and i could it's the word nefarious is perfect because the hair on the back of your neck will stand up